So when you take notes in my class, what I would say is um, uh, don't just be a scribe. We don't have time for you to write down every single thing that I have up here, okay? So the expectation isn't that you're just going to write, 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 okay? Uh, I'll tell you what to write. If I'm taking good notes, I've got out my fresh new notebook for uh, spring 2022. I'm writing, you know, statistics, chapter one, section 1.1. What is statistics is what I would call it. That's fine. I'd underline it. So I've titled my notes. Your notes are for your reference. It makes sense to have, if you want to reference these things, have a title. So you can flip the page and go, okay, that's what's here. There are some things, some focal points that we're going to take a look at. You do not need to write this down. You don't need the focal points. But we're going to identify the term variables. We're going to look at quantitative and qualitative variables. We're going to look at populations versus samples. And we're going to talk about parameters from populations and statistics from samples. Okay? So I know in your textbook, you know, it was kind of dense in all of the paragraphs, kind of the two or three pages of, you know, pretty thick, dense uh, write-ups. But um, these are kind of the main uh, vocabulary terms that you're going to need to understand and differentiate between to be successful moving forward, especially in your homework, okay? So, the introduction, I would write down anytime we get these bold words, I would take the time to write these things down. So if that's what you would like to do, I do know that the book, you may have already gotten these from the book, and that's okay. By the way, the book might have a subtle difference in how they describe these things. You know, that's okay. Um, this is, these are just generally what these vocabs mean. So statistics is just the study of how to collect, organize, analyze, and interpret numerical information and data. All right. We're going to spend a lot of time on the collect part in the first chapter. The second chapter, so this would be chapter one. In chapter two, we really start getting into the organize in the analyze, we're actually, this is where we're going to start having Excel. Excel is going to do the big analyze part. This is the math. And again, in this course, we're going to let the computer do the really, the drawn out math for us. Okay. And then the interpret, there's going to be a lot of, I would say chapter, I would say chapters five through nine and the rest that we do is on kind of interpreting, although we will talk about interpreting some things uh, early on as well, okay? And then it's just numerical information and data, okay? Typically when we collect information, it's numerical, it's data. Individuals are the people or objects included in the study, and a variable is a characteristic of the individual to be measured or observed. So we, in the past, as you've collected data, you might not have considered it a variable like we consider a variable in math class, okay? And um, what I mean by that is if I'm gonna collect data on any of you, well, we, we, first of all, I collect data on you guys all the time. I asked you guys to put your name in so I could take attendance. Taking attendance is a form of data, okay? that variable, that characteristic, would be absent or present, okay? So the variable we're talking about is attendance, the, and the characteristic would be present or absent, all right? And we do that all the time. There's lots of body measurements we can take, lots of variables from our body. There's measurements we could uh, describe about our personality. Those are different variables, okay? So don't overthink that term variable. It's just whatever we're looking at the heading of our data, and then we write down all the characteristics or all the numbers behind it, okay? For instance, if we, and you don't have to write this down, but again, you're writing down the bold uh, stuff and, and the definitions. So for instance, if we want to do a study about the people who have climbed Mount Everest, then the individuals in the study are all the people 
who have actually made it to the summit. One variable, don't write all this down, one variable might be the height of such individuals, so height is a variable. Other variables might be age, weight, gender, nationality, income, and so on. Regardless of the variable we use, we would not include measurements or observations from people who have not climbed the mountain. Okay? The variables in a study can be quantitative or qualitative. Now you can write down these long definitions or you can understand that quantitative is when our data is numbers and qualitative is when our data is typically words. Uh, an example of qualitative, because you're like, what do you mean, why would data be words? What if I asked you, what's your favorite car? If I asked you what your favorite car was, you're not going to tell me, oh, it's a 35, or it's 174, or it's a billion. You're not going to tell me a number that doesn't make sense. But you would tell me words. If you told me your favorite car was a, a Ford F-150, or maybe it's a Jeep Wrangler, okay, or a Toyota Tacoma, or a Toyota Prius, or a Jaguar, or a Ferrari, those are words that you would write down as you're collecting data, uh, and, those, and so those are qualitative, all right? Quantitative are numbers. Now I will say, just because it's a number doesn't mean it's quantity means anything. And that's what we're going to get into in actually 1.3. We'll start talking about our data being uh, like different levels of measurement is what we're going to get into. Okay. So notice here it says a quantum variable has a value or numerical measurement. A qualitative variable describes an uh, individual in a category or group, and specifically they say male or female, as an example. Okay. All right, these you definitely want to write down. These are a big part of kind of your homework here, population and sample. In population data, the data are from every individual of interest. And I believe you guys already know this uh, because you took, you know, elementary biology class, elementary science classes, really hit on the idea of population is everybody and sample is only some. The thing that's difficult in identifying is it a population or is a sample is how well defined our population is. Because we can have lots of different populations if we just keep defining it differently. We can have the population of this statistics course. We can have the population of students at Camp College. We can have the population of all the people in Suffolk. We can have all the the population of all the people in Virginia, the population of everybody in America, of North America, of the world, right? So how we define our population is very important because it can change. But if you can identify the population, then you can identify the sample. It is important to know whether the data are a population or sample. Data from specific population are fixed and complete. Data from sample may vary from sample to sample and are not complete. And this gets to a higher level understanding of what the point of statistics is. And the point of statistics, uh, and it's wrapped, summed up in here, is that yes, if we could take data from a population, then we would have, uh, we, would, we would know things like the mean and the median because they are fixed and complete. The problem is populations are very hard to manage. I would almost say they are unmanageable. All right. 
a, a real population, especially large ones, can be very unmanageable. Okay? Uh, it's very hard to get data from billions of things. All right? So what do we do? We, get, we collect from a sample. And a sample is our go-to. It's very manageable. We don't need extremely large numbers to find out things from a sample. Now, those things that we find out, though, may vary. The average might vary, okay? And it might not be as accurate as we need it to be. An example would be if I wanted to know the average height of males, if I could take the height of every male on the earth, I would get a very accurate average height of males. But if I took a sample and my sample happened to be the uh, Los Angeles Laker basketball team and the Los Angeles Laker basketball team has an average height of six foot nine because there's, a, I think, 10 or 12 people on the team and they are un incredibly tall. Uh, I did all the math right. I, could I say that six foot nine is the average male height in the world? No, you'd say you're, Brent, you're an idiot. You can't take the tall people and call that a good sample, all right? And this first part, this understanding is what leads us to where we're going. How do we get a sample that's not the Los Angeles Lakers, okay? How do we get what's called a representative sample, which we'll talk about a little bit later? How do we get a sample that represents the short people too, the average people too, okay? Because if populations are unmanageable and we have to rely on samples, then we better find a quality sample, not the Los Angeles Lakers, okay? If we know what the population is, then we can call something a parameter. So think population parameter. A population parameter is a numerical measure that describes an aspect of a population. Examples of the population parameter are going to be the mean, the range, the median, the mode, etc. Okay? There's many of them. Okay? And I know you're familiar with the mean. Add them all up and divide. Okay? So a population mean would be called a parameter. If the mean or the range or the median or the mode comes from a population, it's a parameter. Similarly, a statistic comes from the sample. Most things we deal with are samples, so typically we're dealing with statistics. A statistic is a numerical measure that describes an aspect of the sample, and the same examples exist. The mean, the sample mean, the sample range, the sample median, and the sample mode, etc. All right, so example, using basic terms, the Hawaii Department of Tropical Agriculture is conducting a study of ready to harvest pineapples in an experimental field. The pineapples are the objects or individuals. If the, inter if the researchers are interested in the individual weights, then the variable is the weight. What can be different? What characteristic are we looking for in pineapples? The weight, that is what could be different. That's our variable. At this point, it is important to specify units of measurement and degrees of accuracy. So now we're going to get into another term that you saw in the homework and in the uh, textbook. Um, oh, didn't not quite yet. Uh, the weights could be measured to the nearest ounce or gram. This is quantitative, so we're reinforcing that idea of what kind of variable is this. It's quantitative uh, because it's a number. It's going to be 
to the nearest ounce or to the nearest gram, okay? If weights of all the ready to harvest pineapples in the field are included, then we have a population. So if all of the pineapples are weighed, we have a population. If we have that weight averaged, then that average is a parameter. Suppose the researchers also want data on taste. Think about taste. If I asked you how good does it taste, are you gonna tell me a number? No, you're probably gonna tell me a word. A panel of tasters rates the pineapple according to Bohr acceptable good. And if we think that numbers were quantitative, where is this leading us to? This is leading us to say that this is going to be qualitative data because we don't have number responses. We have words like poor, acceptable, good. Okay. Some of the pineapples are included in the taste, so only some. The variable is taste. That's what we're testing for. And so this is qualitative, and they throw uh, another word at you, categorical. Qualitative or categorical, these are two words that are saying the same thing. I think that's called a synonym, okay? Qualitative, categorical are two ways to say the same thing. I think people prefer saying categorical variable more because when you start talking about quantitative, qualitative, quantitative, quantitative, qualitative, it can start getting to be a tongue twister. So people prefer quantitative and categorical. Then you get a real difference between the two, okay? But these are two words to say the same thing. Because only some of the pineapples in the field, only some of the pineapples of the field uh, are in the study, that makes it a sample. And the proportion of pineapples in the sample with a taste of good is a statistic. Okay, because the measure, the proportion, came from a sample, it's called a statistic. Where before, we were talking about the weights of all the pineapples. Well, if we're talking about all, that's a population, so it was a parameter, okay? Population parameter. If it comes from a population, it's a parameter. If it comes from a sample, it's a statistic. All right. And I think that's it for 1.1. We're going to save this levels of measurement for 1.3. So now we're going to take a look at uh, 1.2 here. And I know it says 30 slides. We won't do. We'll, we'll get some good notes. But the last, I want to say the last 18 slides are really like four slides. Okay. So section 1.2, we're going to call random samples. So we've talked about data. We've said population, all the data, sample, some of the data. Is it qualitative data, words? Is it quantitative data, numbers? Now that we've talked about data, we can go ahead and start talking about samples, okay? Because again, population... Very hard to deal with. Samples, those are our favorite. Okay? That's what we like to... Even though our samples could be very, very large. Okay? Like with all the COVID stuff we've heard over the last two years, there's still samples in the millions. They could have tens of millions in their sample data. Okay? That's fine. Uh, but it's still not a population. Okay, so understand that sample doesn't mean like just a few manageable pieces. There can be t tens of millions or, you know, as long as it's not the population, it's less than the population, then it's a sample. All right. So if we want data, remember, we don't want the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay, we don't want our average height to be six foot nine because that's ridiculous. So we're going to talk about how to get samples that people won't look at you and go, 
you know that sounds ridiculous, right? The average height of men are, are not six foot nine. I barely know anybody that's taller than six foot nine. Okay? Most men I know are a lot shorter than six foot nine. Okay? So that's so that's kind of the first thing we've got to start addressing is if we want people to take our study seriously, we've got to get conclusions that people are going to say, well, I shouldn't say they agree with. I will say that if they try their best, they cannot find fault with. Okay? That's what you're that's the scrutiny you have to stand up to in statistics is you if you come out with a conclusion, it's got to resist everyone wanting to tear it down. There are just going to be people that always want to take a result and throw it in the garbage or say it's stupid or it's ridiculous for all kinds of reasons. Okay? And so our statistical process has to stand up to that scrutiny and it starts with finding samples that don't get it thrown in the garbage. Again, if I just took the Los Angeles Lakers basketball team, that would be a terrible sample. Okay? That would get at the, you get laughed out of the room. So, don't write this down, but we're going to explain the importance of random samples. We're going to look at simple random samples using random numbers. We're uh, going to simulate a random process, and we're going to describe stratified, cluster, systematic, uh, and convenience sampling. Um, and random, okay? I don't think we're going to deal with multi-stage. All right, not too interested in multi-stage. And these are what you've seen, you know, in the homework if you already attempted the homework. If you already read 1.2, it's in there. Okay, so simple random sample. Go ahead and write this down. Also write down that n, lowercase n, equals the sample size. If we're going to do college-level statistics, we're going to start getting into uh, a lot of goofy-looking, hieroglyphic-looking letters, okay? And the first one that we're going to deal with is lowercase n. I suppose I should have put out there that lowercase x is the variable, okay? So now we've got two pieces. Now, math-wise... We're not going to deal with this until next week or the week after these these letters, but it is going to be something that we're going to get familiar with. And when we start getting formulas in Chapter 3, these N's and X's and some other goofy things are going to show up. So it's good to see them now. Plant that seed. Lowercase n is sample size. I suppose in case you wondered, capital N is the population size all right so that's good to know too capital n is the population size lowercase n is the sample size x is the variable that we're interested the characteristic we're interested in so it says a simple random sample of n measurements from a population is a subset of the population that makes sense lowercase n is the sample size yeah it would be a subset of the population selected in such a manner that every sample of size n from the population has an equal chance of being selected. And that is super, super dense, mathy talk. Oh my gosh. How do you make sense of that? Well, throughout the semester, we will work towards gaining a better understanding of this. Because right now, because the math that we're going to do doesn't require this part right here, every sample of size n, um, we're just going to do, uh, when we do random today, uh, it'll, it'll be very familiar. Simple random just takes it one step further, okay? And we're, we're not quite ready to dive into that yet, but basically what this says is that if you can imagine uh, the, the population, all the people in Virginia's name are in a... Uh, they put their name on a piece of paper, put it in the, in the hat. So millions of names are in the hat. The idea is that every group of, say, 30, let's say the sample size that we want is 30, every group of 30 names 
has an equal chance of being selected. And what this means is, what the big picture is, is it gets at, at, to that idea of the Los Angeles Lakers being selected, okay? We know that we don't want that, okay? We don't want those outliers. The Lakers are outliers, essentially. And so this simple random sample has, math, has the math built into it so that um, the Lakers... Even if the if the Lakers are selected, even though they randomly could be, uh, we would know that there's an issue there. We'd say, "Hey, wait a second. That's you just got the Lakers. That's ridiculous." Okay. Again, it's gonna take us months to get through and really hammer this home. So don't worry too much about it right now. Okay. What you should be worried about is just random. Sampling. This goes much more to what you understand of sampling, and that's random, okay? The thing is, we always want random. Random is the most basic. You know random all the way back to probably first or second grade when you could write your name on a little piece of paper and put it in the teacher's hat as they walked around the room and then somebody draws a name for a prize. You understood that you had one of the chances to win and because the hat was held up high and nobody in the teacher and the eyes were closed and the teacher was doing this, we got a hat right here. Because of all this, it's random, right? Everybody has the same shot at being selected. And it's kind of the gold standard, except it's the gold standard in our understanding of how we want to get a sample, but it's really hard to get to in practice. Okay? Now when we play bingo, every ball is the exact same shape. It has the exact same weight. We put it in this tumbler, we spin it around, we close our eyes when we look in, and it would just, whatever ball we draw is completely random, okay? No ball, no number has a better chance of being selected, okay? Uh, you could think of random sample, you know, the lottery uh, in a lot of ways, in, a, in some of them, uh, but like the Powerball, we're talking about completely random how they get the balls, okay? So that's one way of getting sampling, okay? The problem, though, with random sample is, well, even if, if I was to drawing names, if I put everyone in California, all, I don't know how many people in California, 20, 30, 40 million people in California, if I put all their names in a hat, okay, and I reached into that hat, I could pull out the 10 names, and those 10 names could be the Los Angeles Lakers basketball players. Is it likely to happen? No, it would be almost astronomically impossible, right? We all agree if there's 40 million names in the hat, and you reach in and pull out, you know, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and I don't know who else plays for him, but if you start picking the Lakers and you get like 10 of them, then there's a problem, and you can spot it. Anybody can spot it a mile away. Like, hey, this is ridiculous. There's no way, okay? But even though it's astronomically odds against it, it could happen. You have to draw ten names, and LeBron has the same chance as anybody else, and Anthony Davis has the same chance as it. You know. All those names are just one name out of the 40 million in that. They've all got the same chance. So it could happen. And that's where random sample falls on its face. <coughs> Is that we could get, we could draw outliers. Okay? Now in bingo, there's no such thing as an outlier. But the Los Angeles Lakers, we know, are very, very tall. And with our variable, our characteristic we were going to look at was height. Then drawing the Lakers is problematic. Okay, so that's one random sample. Other sampling techniques, stratified, okay? Write this one down for sure. Of all of them, this one is probably the toughest, okay? This one is the one that students struggle to really, this in cluster, okay? But this is one that students struggle to get a grasp on. So stratified sampling. We're trying to do better than just random sampling. And it says a stratified sample 
is one in which members of the population are divided into two or more subgroups called strata that share similar characteristics like age, gender, or ethnicity. A random sample from each is then drawn. Okay, so understand that what we do here is what we uh, we make um, groups. And we're going to collect data. We're going to collect uh, some data from all groups. And if you don't want to write down this very mathy, dense thing, I know you probably already started. But if you don't want to write that down, definitely write down what I just wrote. The kind of lay terms, how we're going to understand it. We're going to take some data from all groups, some from all. Notice the visual has freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And for some reasons, there are, you know, well, there are times when we would want to put students in their age group or their grade level, okay? Because freshmen are very different than seniors. Okay, seniors are a lot bigger, more mature, you know, all that stuff. So if we're trying to find out information about the student body, what does the student body think? Sure, we would collect data from everybody and look at it, but we'd also want to look at it by grade level because maybe a freshman experience and perception of their experience is very different from a senior's perception of their experience. But notice that every group we just take some data. We're going to take this person's data from the freshmen. We're going to take these two people's from the sophomores, these two from the juniors, these two from the seniors. We're leaving a lot of data unused. Okay, we're not using all of it. We're just using some. We take some data from all groups. But notice it's the same amount of data two, 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 and two. You can't take a bunch of freshman stuff and only a little bit of senior stuff. So that's stratified. Some data from all groups. Let's compare that to... I'm going to skip ahead and we'll come back. Let's compare that to cluster because cluster and stratified are the two that people get mixed up because they're they feel similar. A cluster sample is one chosen by dividing the population into groups called clusters. So again, we're dividing into groups that are each similar to the population. The researcher then randomly selects some of the clusters. The sample consists of data collected from every member of the cluster selected. And so again, we have this idea of groups. And now we're going to take all data from some groups. So while we're still making groups, we're going to take all the data from some of the groups. And then the rest of the data is just left alone. Okay, so it's like the opposite of stratified. Stratified was some from all, cluster is all from some. So we've got random, we've got stratified, we've got cluster, We've got just a few more and then we're and then that's it, okay? I'll give you a moment to write this down. So we've got stratified some from all, cluster all from some. 
Let's look at systematic. Systematic is like the easiest one to spot. This is like our favorite. A systematic sample is one chosen by selecting every nth member of the population. So they have a factory line of bottles here. Okay, they're producing some kind of drink. And for quality control, they don't check every bottle. They'll check every some number. And here it's every tenth. So they'll pull every tenth bottle. They'll check it. Hey, does it look good? Is it, does it taste good? Everything okay here? That's how they do their quality control. And every nth. So anytime you see a problem that says every seventh, every 50th, every thousandth, you're talking systematic sampling. All right. Uh, you know, an example where you might do systematic sampling um, in real life would be like if you have a phone book and you want to uh, collect some data by randomly calling people, you might go down the page and say, okay, every 100th. So you go 100, here's a name, call them. The 200th name, you call them. The 300th name, you call them. You cannot, though, you cannot veer from it. Okay, you can't be like, okay, we're going to go 101, then we're going to go 99, then we're going to go 100, and then we're going to go 107, because then you're just cherry picking the data that you want. Okay, you don't, it, you know, if the good piece of data, good or the best or the worst piece of data doesn't fall into your systematic sampling, then it is what it is. Okay, um, you have to stick to that number, whatever that count is. All right, last thing, convenience sampling. Convenience sampling is just like it sounds. It's one in which the sample is convenient to select. It's convenient for the researcher. When would you do convenience sampling? Well, you would do convenience sampling when the outcomes aren't that big of a deal, okay? You know, no one's health's at stake. There's no money at stake. The stuff that you guys are going to do for your research in this class, you know, convenience sampling is probably going to be okay. All right? Um, and what that means is if you need to know, like, like uh, what's, every, what, what's, the favor, what's the favorite music of people on campus, you're going to stand out in the hall and wait for people to walk by, and you're going to say, hey, what's, the favorite, what's your favorite music? What's your favorite music? And it's going to be convenient. You're not going to go and spend money on mailers to send a mail piece of mail to every student uh, enrolled at Camp College and asking them, you know, what's your music uh, uh, preference, right? There's no point, okay? So sometimes we just want to know things, so we just go to there and ask, okay? If you wanted to know people's favorite ice cream, it would be just fine going to... Uh, a grocery store and standing in front of the ice cream section and asking them. People that are buying ice cream probably tell you, probably will say, yeah, I'll tell you. Okay? Just if you want to know those things, sometimes you just got to go to where that information is. You don't need to necessarily make a big production out of it. Okay? Especially if the outcomes don't necessarily matter. All right? Whoops.